Ladies and gentlemen, as I said in the last video, I do think we are now in a very volatile trading range over the next couple of weeks. For context, the triple Qs went from an RSI of 81, which was very overbought, down to 38. Now you're on the oversold side. You're likely to see a bounce here. Really, it's all going to come down to next week because we have major events, including the Fed, earnings, and economic data that will either send this market higher or lower in probably a substantial way. And here in this video, I will give you an overview of what to expect in this upcoming week and what my personal expectations are. So first and foremost, as I have explained in many videos, especially leading up to this decline that we have seen in the triple Qs, which is so far a decline of about 8%, the S&P has declined about 5% so far. I think earnings were the biggest part of this decline. I don't think it was political uncertainty. I don't think it was any kind of growth scare. In fact, I know it was no growth scare or recession fears, even in, in spite of getting some bad data. On Friday, we had durable goods orders that came in at negative 6.6%. Actually, I believe that was Thursday, if, if I'm correct, which is not great. That was the worst number in years. But I don't think Wall Street is concerned about political uncertainty yet. I don't think we know enough about Kamala Harris's potential policies or Trump potential policies for the markets to be too concerned about that just yet. I think an election correction is likely coming in September when we learn more about policies. And that's pretty typical during election years. But even heading into this drop, I was concerned that markets were pricing in too much good news for earnings. And we haven't seen earnings be a disaster. Like earnings have been okay. They they haven't been as good so far as other quarters, but they've still been good. They've still been okay for the most part meeting expectations. But when stocks were priced for perfection, meeting expectations was not good enough. And we'll see if we get bad earnings because if we do get truly bad numbers, from any, especially of your big tech names reporting earnings this week, that's going to change things quite a bit. Because right now, we're meeting expectations. We're not getting bad earnings. We're not getting knock your socks off earnings. But if we get bad earnings, that's going to be problematic. Now, if we get knock your socks off good earnings this week or just continued kind of meeting expectations, then I think that does set us up for at least a near term bounce, probably to your 50 day moving average on the triple Qs, which would be upside of about $10 up to about 473 on those triple Qs. So this is your earnings lineup on Monday morning. You have McDonald's on semi. Uh, Phillips, Bank of Martin, you have a lot of other banks as well to, uh, on Monday pre-market. Monday and after hours, you have Tilray, Symbotic, F5, Latest, and I mean, there's going to be a bunch of other companies, but uh, those are some of the ones that you guys might know of. Tuesday pre-market, you have SoFi, PayPal, Pfizer, BP, P&G, and Merck, as well as JetBrew. JetBlue and Enterprise Products Partners. Tuesday and after hours, you have AMD, Microsoft, Arista, Starbucks, Pinterest, First Solar, Caesars, Lemonade, Electric Arts, and Gene X. Wednesday, pre market, you have Boeing, Norwegian Cruise Line, Wingstop, Kraft Heinz, Altria, Humana, Cameco, Generic, MasterCard, and Tiva. Wednesday and after hours, you have Meta, Arm, Qualcomm, Carvana, Lamb Research, Western Digital, Riot and Paycom. Thursday pre-market, Moderna, Canadian Natural, uh, Crocs, Mobileye, ConocoPhillips, Wayfair, SiriusXM, Canada Goose, and a couple of others. Thursday and after hours, you have Amazon, Apple, Intel, Coinbase, DraftKings, Roku, Block, um, the Marathon, Bookings, and Mercado Libre. And then Friday, as you typically get on Fridays pre-market, you have oil companies and mainly healthcare companies. So this week, Oh my gosh, you have Microsoft, that's a $3 trillion company. You have Meta, that's uh, a $1 trillion company. That's $4 trillion in market cap alone. You have AMD, that's about a $250 billion market cap company. You have Amazon, that's a, what, $2.5 trillion company. You have Apple, that's a $3 trillion company. You have Intel, uh, which is like a $300 billion company. All in all, you have like... 10 plus billion dollars in market cap value 
that is reporting earnings this week. I think it might be closer to like 12 billion in total. A trillion. Those are huge numbers. That is three over three times the market cap value of the Russell 2000. Like this week is the earnings week. Last week didn't matter. That was crumbs compared to this week. Now, if Microsoft, Amazon, Apple, AMD, Intel, Qualcomm, or, uh, you know, uh, Lamb Research for that matter, some of your AI stocks or your big tech names, Meta, Arm, group those in there as well. If they report bad earnings, then this market's going lower, okay? Because expectations are still high. What we've seen out of big tech so far, at least Google was a great report, but it wasn't impressive, okay? There's a difference between a great report and an impressive report. NVIDIA, they give you impressive reports. Knock your socks off, impressive reports. But Google's was just kind of in line. It was good. Expectations were high. It, it just came in good. Now, if you see any of these companies miss earnings, you're going to have some pain for markets, especially in the triple Qs. Now, I think the base case assumption, the most likely outcome is at least a meet across the board, given what we've seen with Google earnings. But it is a possibility, and I think the risks are skewed to the downside, that you do have a little bit worse earnings than expected. I think there's a greater chance of disappointment this week than large upside surprises, but with the expectation, we're probably going to meet estimates across the board. Now, I think at this point, with the 8% drop you have seen in the triple Qs, meeting expectations is probably going to be seen as good news, okay? Apple has fallen from... To what 235 or so down to 217. I think meeting expectations in the case of Apple is going to be okay. Same is true for Meta that has fallen from what the highs of about 540 down to 465. I mean, meeting expectations is probably good enough for Meta. What about Amazon? Well, I think to a lesser extent, that's still true as well. Amazon went from about 202 at the all-time high down to 182. I mean, you've kind of reset expectations with all of these stocks before they report earnings. Same is true with Microsoft going from about 270 down to, or uh, 470 down to 425. I mean, I think an inline earnings report is at least gonna be decent for these companies. So I would be a little bit careful for anyone that is super bearish heading into this upcoming week just because of earnings. Now here in this upcoming week, we will have a lot of economic data as well as major events. So uh, let's just start with Monday. Monday, 10.30 in the morning, Dallas Fed Manufacturing Index expecting a number of negative 12. Last month was negative 15.1. That's going to be the first um, bit of data the markets will be um, reacting to, although I don't think uh, that's going to be too important. Even heading into Tuesday, you're going to get a lot of data out of Europe, especially the GDP growth rate quarter over quarter and year over year um, out of the EU. So really looking at all of these countries combined. And markets used to freak out about Europe a lot. Lately, we haven't. Um, lately, markets don't care about Europe too much. But, you know, with, with bad numbers in Europe, that can definitely cause a little bit of fear in our markets. But on Tuesday, you're going to have S&P, Case-Shiller, home price month over month and year over year, expecting these numbers to come in okay. Year over year, expecting 6.9% increase and month over month, expecting a 1.2% increase. That's crazy for home prices on a month over month basis. Um, so that would not necessarily be good if, if those numbers um, come in high. Now for um, Tuesday as well, 10 o'clock in the morning, Jolt job opening. So think about it like this. This is really a metric of evaluating the economy um, more than the job market itself. Because let's say you're a Dollar General, for instance, and you're looking to hire five employees. That Dollar General is probably quite busy. You can use this analogy for a restaurant as well. If you're looking to hire five employees um, minus a bunch of people quitting, which is not normal for you know the economy as an aggregate then you're probably doing okay, right? If you're only looking to hire one employee compared to five, you're probably doing not as good 
as if you were looking to hire five. So if the job openings number declines, especially at a fast rate, that's a sign the economy is slowing down. That's a sign um, businesses are slowing down. Now, Jolt's job openings, Tuesday, 10 o'clock in the morning, you're expecting to go from 8.14 million job openings down to 8.05 million job openings. There will be a revision as well to last month, probably a downward revision. Um, so you'll have to take that into consideration as well well so keep that in mind now wednesday we're gonna have the chicago pmi 8 45 in the morning pending home sales month over month and year over year but the main thing here guys is the fed the fed interest rate decision on wednesday and then the conference at 2 30. the biggest thing that, that really matters to markets from fed jerome powell this wednesday we're not expecting any change to the fed funds you know policy rate okay the fed's not going to come out and cut rates technically there is last i checked about a five percent chance now a 6.2 percent chance of a cut coming july 31st but the fed's not going to do that that would really spook the markets that that would cause a crash if the fed came out this wednesday and cut rates now the biggest thing and really only thing that matters is does the fed solidify a september cut does the fed take this wednesday to say, yeah, we've gained greater confidence, inflation's heading back to 2%, we can look to start cutting rates as early as September. Now, they're going to still leave the door open to not cut rates in September to some degree, but if something along those lines is said, the markets are going to get excited about that. OK, now, if the Fed comes out and walks this in-between neutral line like they have for quite a while now, the markets might start to doubt whether or not we're going to get three cuts this year. Because during the Fed's last dot plot that came out just about a month and a half, two months ago, the Fed was only forecasting one cut this year. Trump came out and told Jerome Powell not to cut rates before the election. Now, they, they're not a political body, according to Fed Jerome Powell, but let's be honest, they are to some degree influenced by politics. There's a chance maybe a 50 50 maybe 60 percent chance that the fed comes out and they are just neutral that they do not uh reaffirm markets expectations for a september cut they put it out there that they they, they may but really continue to be on this data dependent approach now if the fed does not come out and you know just outright say hey we can look to start cutting rates as soon as september markets may not like that Markets may sell off because of that. Now, I'm still expecting a trading range. Again, for the SPY specifically, I'm expecting between 530 and 550 on the upside. But if if we come down to test that that lower end range of about 530, that would be downside from here of roughly two and a half percent. That could definitely happen because of the Fed. Perhaps you could even call it the 100-day moving average would be another good level to look at around 526. That would be downside of about 3.3%. I think if we do get downside this upcoming week, it could be because the Fed. And again, that's just because markets have high expectations that the Fed's going to be cutting in September. And the markets want validation of that as soon as possible like the next time we hear from powell markets are expecting validation of a september cut and possibly even validation of multiple cuts this year considering september you're priced at over a well i guess not technically but you're priced at a 100 chance of at least one cut by september there's actually an 11.5 percent chance of two rate cuts uh, um by september by december you're pricing in 56.9 percent odds um, plus seven percent odds of at least three cuts by December. So you're pricing in about sixty-two percent chance of three cuts by December. Markets may even want to hear a really dovish Powell. That's a possibility, judging off of what markets are currently pricing in. Now, do we get a super committed dovish Powell? I'm not convinced of that. Okay, I'm 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 not. 
the Fed usually doesn't like to back themselves into a corner by making statements. So that's Wednesday. That's going to be the biggest event of this week. But Thursday, you will have S&P Global Manufacturing PMI final numbers for July coming out at 945 in the morning. 10 o'clock in the morning, ISM Manufacturing PMI is expecting these will actually creep downwards from four, uh, 48.5 last month to 48.2. So expecting more weakness in the manufacturing sector. You will get new orders, prices paid, construction spending, and manufacturing employment as well that uh, will come out at the same time. Uh, but again, likely really throughout the rest of this week from Wednesday through Friday, it's probably going to be all about the Fed, at least until Friday morning when you have non-farm payrolls. You're expecting 185,000 job ads. Last month, you came in at 206,000 job ads. But really, the most important thing is the unemployment rate. Uh, because that has been ticking up just a tenth of 1% over the last what? I believe it's the last four reports. One, two, three, four. If that ticks up another time to five, you're going to trigger the SOM rule, um, which is seen as an indicator of, I, I guess, an early indicator of a recession. Um, and, and we've talked about the SOM rule before many of times. It is where the three-month average for the unemployment rate breaks above the lowest point over the last 12 months. So it's really showing you the velocity of the unemployment rate that is rising because when you go through recessions, you tend to get a rapid rise in the unemployment rate. And if we go up another 10th of 1%, you're going to be breaking that 50 basis point change in the last three months. And um, that is going to trigger the SOM rule. And that could spark a little bit more fears about a recession, but we'll have to wait and see. I think we could be maybe just coming in line around 4.1%, um, considering we've went up a tenth of 1% the last four um, months in a row. Wouldn't surprise me if there's a little bit of a just expectations being met and the unemployment rate that does not go up. So that will be very important coming Friday, and that'll be the main story of what moves markets coming on Friday. You will also get manufacturing orders month over month, manufacturing payrolls, government payrolls, average weekly hours, participation rate, average hourly earnings month over month and year over year. That's also something that markets are paying pretty close attention to as well. We want to see wages start to catch up to some of the inflationary pressures we have seen over the past couple of years. Now, another big theme of this upcoming week will be the 10 and two year yield curve, especially with Jerome Powell. Depending on what he signals, he may actually cause the yield curve to uninvert. Now, normally when you uninvert on the yield curve, you're about one to three months away from a recession. Normally when you uninvert, is when the markets actually start to go through some pretty significant downside. Now, as I have explained in many videos, when you uninvert on the yield curve, all it's telling you is the Fed is about to start cutting rates. That's it. It's not telling you the economy is going into a recession. Now, what normally happens is when the Fed is starting to cut rates, you're going into a recession. So historical precedents really cause this precedent that markets have that when the 10 and two year yield curve uninverts, you're going into recession. It's not exactly the case. All it's saying is the Fed's about to start cutting rates. Whether or not that's because of a recession or not, I think is, you know, uh, up, up for debate. And that's all that the yield curve is reacting to. Now, the latest AI investor sentiment survey that came out on Thursday of this past week, you had bullish investors at 43.2%, neutral investors at 25.1%, and bearish investors at 31.7%. Now, um, your one-year bearish high was 50.3%. So you're only at 31.7%. This market is not very bearish, okay? And a lot of that has to do with the um, rotation that has happened in markets. We haven't seen just an outright sell-off, okay? The NASDAQ has been selling off, rightfully so, but the Russell has been rallying, so you're not getting that big round of fear. If you want to say, hey, we need more fear before this selling is over with, I get that point. That's a valid point, that maybe there could be more downside, but I don't think the markets are going to Get super fearful just based on earnings meeting expectations. You need to see bad earnings. You need to see a Powell that pushes back on potentially a September cut, um, which, again, I don't find those scenarios as the most likely path ahead. Maybe a 30% chance. Maybe a 70% chance. 
that earnings come in line with estimates. And Powell does at least to some degree lean towards a cut in September. But there's also that 30% chance earnings come in bad this upcoming week. And Powell does not lean into a cut in September. He just stays neutral. And that would be the scenario that causes further substantial downside in markets. And as far as your sentiment barometers as well, again, you can point to the fear and greed index, which even after an 8% decline in the NASDAQ is still neutral at 45 as of Friday. Now, the previous close you had on Thursday, you were in fear territory at 39. So uh, still sitting right at about neutral, maybe a little bit of fear out there. But normally when you do go through these correction events, you do go through sell offs. You, you, you normally get this CNN fear and greed index down to like 20, like usually a little bit in extreme fear is where you tend to kind of um, bottom out. Um, so I think this is another kind of validation for the bears to say, hey, maybe there could be more selling ahead. But again, the reason for the selling is more important than the selling itself. And again, you also have the percent of stocks currently trading above their 50 day moving average as 69.42, something that you normally do not see as markets decline. Now, yes, this has been because of the rotation that we have seen. But in all reality, you have almost 70% of markets currently in an uptrend after an 8% decline in the NASDAQ, that's not what you normally see. So there is room for more selling in markets. Like markets are not oversold, right? Um, in, in, in terms of the average stock out there and generalized selling. So there can be more selling. Again, if earnings come in bad, or, or I, I should also add to this, if AI earnings disappoint, which looks unlikely given we have TSMC earnings out the way and some, you know, cadence design systems and some other um, adjacent AI companies, that looks really unlikely at this point that we get anything bad out of AI. Um, it will happen at some point, but not this quarter. Okay, let's just be honest. Um, but again, if we get bad earnings or we get a Powell that is just so neutral, it's disgusting that's where you could get more generalized selling, especially in the Russell and especially in some of the areas that have recently started to outperform. Now, again, that's not a base case. There's about a 70% chance we get a Powell that confirms September is likely to be the, the cut and earnings come in line with estimates. And that's going to be enough to at least give you a short term bounce. But again, overall, I'm still expecting a trading range um, in the best case scenario for this upcoming week or the worst case scenario for this upcoming week. Um, I'm still expecting an S&P that SPY that trades between 530, call it your 100 day moving average on the lowest extent around 526 and 550. I don't think you're going back to all time highs anytime soon, at least not over the next five or six weeks. Um, I think there will be a larger correction around the political uncertainty in September, perhaps in August is a possibility as well. Although I think you want to get through the first debate and let the campaigns really get rolling, but before more uncertainty comes in um, from that regard. And, and historically, right, end of August, September tends to be when you get that election correction, if not in October itself. But I do think it's going to be very volatile, and I think we can expect a lot of 2% up days, 2% down days, 1% up days, 1% down days. I think that's going to be the new normal over at least the next really three to six months here. So let me know what you think about this information down below in the comment section. Hit the like button as well as subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already. You guys have a fantastic rest of your day and I will see you in the next one.